Good morning. It's good to see all of you today again. What a gift it is to be together, uh, especially as we still remain relatively isolated in so many things. Just a quick reminder, uh, please wear your masks in and out, especially when you come up to do uh, communion, I mean, um, um, offering and that sort of thing. Um, you know, this COVID stuff is not going away anytime soon. Okay, as much as we love to say in two months, everybody will be back to normal, that's not going to happen. So we still need to respect that. And, and, and again, we don't know who are the people who are more vulnerable than the others. So we need to make, be respectful of that. So please do remember that. That is my only announcement this morning. I hope that's a good thing. So now we greet each other in our new way. We wave. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. From the rising of the sun to its setting. The name of the Lord is to be praised. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a worthy in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Sanctify us in your truth. From the rising of the sun to its setting. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen.
You may be seated. The first reading is from 1 Kings chapter 19, and this takes place after Elijah fled out of fear of Jezebel and Ahab. And the Lord said, Go out and stand on the mount before the Lord. Behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind tore the mountains and broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, the sound of a low whisper. And when Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his cloak and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. And behold, there came a voice to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He said, I have been very jealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the people of Israel have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you arrive, you shall anoint Haziel to be king over Syria. And Jehu, the son of Nimshi, you shall anoint to be king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of Abel-Maholah, you shall anoint to be prophet in your place. And the one who escapes from the sword of Haziel shall Jehu put to death. And the one who escapes from the sword of Jehu shall Elisha put to death. Yet I will leave a seven thousand in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. So he departed from there and found Elisha, the son of Shaphat, who was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen in front of him. And he was with the twelfth. Elijah passed by and cast his cloak upon him. And he left the oxen and ran after Elijah and said, let me kiss my father and my mother, and then I will follow you. And he said to him, Go back again, for what have I done to you? And he returned from following him and took the yoke of oxen and sacrificed them and boiled their flesh with the yokes of the oxen and gave it to the people, and they ate. Then he arose and went after Elijah and assisted him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Preserve me, O God, for in you I take refuge. As for the saints in the land, they are the excellent ones in whom is all my delight. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. the Lord who gives me counsel. In the night also my heart instructs me. My heart is glad and my whole being rejoices. My flesh also dwells secure. You'll make known to 
to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be The epistles from 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and St. Paul writes, The word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God the world did not know God through wisdom, it pleased God through the folly of what we preach to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks seek wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and folly to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God, for the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel is from Luke chapter 5. We read together. On one occasion, while the crowd was pressing in on Jesus to hear the word of God, he was standing by the lake Gennesaret, and he saw two boats by the lake. But the fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. Getting into one of the boats, which was Simon's, he asked him to put out a little from the land, and he sat down and taught the people from the boat. And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep, and let down your nets for a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we toiled all night and took nothing, but at your word I will let down the nets. And when they had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish, and their nets were breaking. They signaled to their partners in the other boats to come and help them. And they came and filled both the boats, so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching men. And when they brought their boats to land, they left everything and followed him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, I love the habitation of your house, and the place where your glory dwells. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and a life everlasting. Amen. And you may be seated.
In the name of Jesus, amen. Do you know the stories of Elijah, about all the miracles he did, and about how he stood up to King Ahab and Queen Jezebel? It all began because the king and the queen turned away from our God and began to worship Baal and Asherah. Baal being a god of rain and fertility, and Asherah being the queen of heaven. And to make matters worse, Ahab and Jezebel had murdered the Lord's prophets, all except for Elijah, and had replaced them with 450 prophets to Baal and 400 prophets to Asherah. Ah, but God had a plan for repentance. Step one, God sent a drought. By Elijah's prayer, God closed the skies to rain for three and a half years. Remember, Baal is the god of rain. <laughs> so what did God do? No rain for prophets of Baal. And then step two, after the three years, God arranges this public spectacle, a competition have you, between Elijah and the 450 prophets of Baal. Here's the setup. Both teams will make an altar. Both teams will offer sacrifice, but neither is allowed any fire. So each team will have to call upon the name of his God to see which God can ignite the sacrifice. Baal's prophets go first. And from morning to noon, they shout, O oh, Baal, answer us. But there's no answer. And after several hours, Elijah begins to mock them. Uh, your God isn't answering, huh? Well, maybe you should cry louder, because maybe he's just deep in thought, or perhaps he's off going to the bathroom, or maybe he's on vacation this time of year. Oh, he could be sleeping. Yeah, maybe he's sleeping. You better cry louder to wake him up. And they do. <laughs> the prophets cry louder and louder all day long. They even begin to cut themselves, pouring out their own blood to show Baal that they love him. Seems backwards, doesn't it? <laughs> it's a late afternoon, into the evening they shout, but there's no answer, there's no voice, no one pays attention. Now, it may be obvious to you as to why. <laughs> well, because Baal's not real. And that's a fair statement. But it would also be valid to say that Baal is real. He's just a demon. <laughs> Indeed, one of the devil's names is Baal Zabub, Baal Zabub. So it could be that Baal wanted to answer, but God didn't allow him. Either way, Baal's prophets get nothing. Now it's Elijah's turn. Elijah builds an altar with 12 stones, one for each tribe of Israel. He lays the wooden altar, he puts the sacrifice on top. But then Elijah does something peculiar. He orders for his altar be, to be drenched with water. And Elijah has him drench the altar three times so that a water fills a moat around the altar. And then Elijah prays. He prays that the people might know the Lord and that their hearts might turn back to him. And instantly, fire falls. The fire consumes the offering. It licks up all the water, and it even turns the wood and the stones to dust in an instant. Boom! Simply by Elijah's prayer. And immediately the people kill the prophets of Baal for being false prophets. And moreover, Elijah prays on their behalf to the true God, and he brings rain. The rains come back. Now that's a long introduction to my sermon, but that's what's happened just before our reading. And it's important to see the context for Elijah's sorrow. It should confuse us. Why is Elijah moping on a mountain? The drought is over, the prophets of Baal are dead, and God has displayed his power over false gods. What could possibly depress you? Well, because it didn't work. 
For even after all that, King Ahab, King Ahab and Queen Jezebel still choose to worship Baal and Asherah, and as goes the king, as goes the country. They also order for Elijah to be killed. So despite his work for three and a half years and all the miracles, it didn't make any lasting difference. And now Elijah's running for his life 40 days and 40 nights until he reaches Mount Horeb and he hides in a cave. Imagine being Elijah in that lonely cave, sobbing. You had hoped to restore your nation and your people. You had wanted to convert your relatives and your neighbors. You imagined that seeing God open the skies for rain and showing the folly of the prophets of Baal, you had imagined that the people would see that and repent. But no, you labored in vain, for the nation will remain pagan. And now you will live the rest of your life in exile. Imagine the despair. Why? Why hadn't the miracles worked? If anything was going to work, it would have been that. And that's when God comes and finds him. What are you doing here, Elijah? Elijah replies, I have been very jealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, but the people have forsaken your covenant. They've thrown down your altars. they killed all your prophets with the sword, and I'm, only one, I'm the only one left. And now they seek to take my life. And the Lord responds by giving him three miraculous sights. First, God sends a great wind that tears the mountain, breaking it, the rocks to pieces. But the Lord is not in the wind. Then an earthquake, powerful, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. Then a fire, like he had seen earlier, but the Lord was not in the fire. All impressive, but it's not where God is present. Ah, but then a low whisper, a soft, gentle voice, and the Lord is present there in his word. And God comforts Elijah. You're not alone. I have 7,000 in Israel, all of whom have not bowed to Baal. And God sends him out, not with miracles, but with a promise. A promise that he will replace Jezebel's family. God also promises to give him Elisha so that he won't be alone. And despite how the devil and the world rage, have no fear, Elijah. I'm going to win in the end. I will win through my word. Today, St. Paul says, the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God, the power to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs, Greeks seek wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified. A stumbling block to Jews, folly to Greeks, but for us, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. Simply marvelous. The devil and the world will rage, but one little word will fell them. Yes, that soft, gentle whisper spoken to Mary, and she conceived. That little word who became flesh within her womb. And nine months later, on a silent night, that little word came into the world almost unnoticed. <laughs> For 30 years, almost unnoticed. And even when he began his ministry, the scriptures say, a broken reed he did not break, a smoldering wick he did not snuff out, for he came in gentleness, and he welcomed sinners and ate with them. He was silent at his trial, 
And even from the cross, he said very little except things like, Father, forgive them. And it is finished. But when he died, the whole creation shook, for that little powerful word was God's secret weapon. And through God's humble plan, Beelzebub's head was crushed. You know, the Bible has this pattern of people winning battles in strange, humble ways. For instance, things looked hopeless at the Red Sea, but God had a way of winning without anyone drawing a sword. At Jericho, God's people won by marching around and blowing trumpets. Gideon won his battle with 300 men armed with torches and clay jars and trumpets. And still many other battles were won by the angels without any human effort. We tend to think that if anything's going to work, it'll be what we deem to be strong. It'll be by our hands. For if you want something done right, you've got to do it yourself. But God has taught us over and over and over again that the victory will only come if he is with us and if he fights for us. And where is he with us today? Not in a mighty wind, not in an earthquake, not in a fire, but in the gentle whisper of the gospel. Just as he says, go baptize and teach, and lo, I will be with you always to the end of the age. <laughs> this is our secret weapon. God's secret weapon hidden in plain sight. For where two or three are gathered in his name, there he is among them. There Christ is, blessing his people and conquering the foe. Friends, the one who is called the Word is with you. He's with you right now. You are not alone. Indeed, there are much more than 7,000 who are faithful. You have many brothers and sisters. You are not alone. God has also given you an Elijah and a bald-headed Elisha to preach that Word. God has promised you that your Ahab and your Jezebel are going down. For sin, death, and devil will not win. And most importantly, he's promised to be with us. In his word, always found in the word, in the message of Christ crucified. And in that whisper, you will find victory. Amen. At this time, we will collect our offerings.
Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We give you thanks, Heavenly Father, that you came to us weak and miserable people with that small, soft word of the cross, that our sins might be forgiven, that we might be your children, and that you have called us out of darkness and into that marvelous light. We pray, Heavenly Father, that we would ever live hearing that word, and that word would be our strength, and that by your goodness, it would be our wisdom in a world that seeks power and might and does not look to you for our help. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for our fellow Christians, both here and throughout the world. We pray for the Elmore family, for Kim Eshman, Paul and Linda Eshman, for the Eshner family, and Alice Evans, that by your goodness they would always know your grace and your love and your peace, and they'd receive your gifts with joy and thanksgiving. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you'd be with the persecuted church throughout the world, that by your goodness they might remain steadfast and strong in the face of many trials and tribulations. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, you alone are the source of all health and healing. Your Son walked this earth healing those who were stricken by many things. We pray that you would grant healing today as you see fit, that you'd be with Ruth and Don, that you'd be with Margaret and Jim, that you'd be with Ron Housley, who, the, who's recovering at home, and for with Bill Cato, the brother-in-law of Sue Mockamer. Grant them health and healing. Grant them, most importantly, to see your love for them in Jesus. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who mourn at the time of death, especially for Nancy Schultz as she mourns uh, the death of her mother. Grant that she may take hope in the promise of the resurrection to eternal life. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, this world has been stricken by a horrible virus, and no end really truly seems to be in sight. But you are the one who can work all things, for you are over all things. We pray that you would grant relief to this world and to our nation from COVID-19. Grant that it might be taken away and that we might give you praise. As we suffer now, though, under these restraints that we have, remind us that these things are not what make the kingdom of God so often. But it's rather the hearing of the word and the living in love and faith. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the leaders of our nation, especially our president, for the leaders of our state, especially our governor that by your goodness they might always seek to do what is right and just and not rule by fear, but rather that they might be called to serve and to lead, holding out the hope that is realistic. We pray that they would receive good counsel and they'd be wise enough to listen. Lord, in your mercy, we pray, Heavenly Father, for the, our church body. We pray for President Harrison of the Missouri Senate, President Meyer, the Michigan District. We pray for our own congregation and the leadership, both pastoral and lay, that you would grant wisdom and understanding, that we might walk in the true confession of faith and love and care for one another. Lord, in your mercy. We pray, Heavenly Father, for justice in our world and for peace. We pray that you would grant there be repentance where it is necessary and that by your goodness, those who, who have acted unjustly might live in repentance and, and faith now. Grant peace, that where there is injustice, that we may uh, work toward a good resolution, always seeking peace in your mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be it the city of Detroit and those of us in our suburbs, grant that there might be peace and wisdom and understanding, protect all those in the, our midst. We pray that you would grant the jobs that are necessary for the daily bread to be provided and that there would be enough left over to provide for those in need. Lord, in your mercy. Oh God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things that surpass all understanding. Pour into our hearts such love toward you that we, loving you above all things, may obtain your promises which exceed all that we can desire. 
through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and take them to heart, that by the patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless and preserve you. Amen. <laughs> 